Welcome to the Not Playing Podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by... Just Patrick Carey. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> uh, you can contact us on email at notplayingpodcast.gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. I was at EGX Resed on Friday. Uh, I just went on my lonesome... Um, but it was cool. There's so much to do there, honestly, mate. Like, they've made it so much bigger, like... all. Like I guess on account of the fact that they had to do a lot of VR, more VR stuff. Yeah, you need a bit uh, more space. Yeah, you do need a bit more space for that. And uh, they'd opened up lot, a lot more of like the downstairs. There was a lot more going on down there. Um, and yeah, so, so what did I you kind try? of sorry. What did you try? Well, I uh, the, the the I guess the headline things really the the main reason I physically had to get myself there was to try the HTC Vive. Um, which I managed to do. Um, it was uh, I, I, it was the first thing I did when I got there. I ran straight down to the the booth they had there. Nvidia were running it, and uh, I as soon as I got there, the, the queue was snaking round that unit. Yeah. Uh, and I was there for about fifteen minutes, and they said, "Oh, all the morning sessions are gone, but come back at one." for the afternoon yeah uh so the idea was that you queue up get an appointment and then go off and come back again whenever it was yeah Uh, so i queued up again at 12 and i got um yeah i got i got in um after queuing for an hour i got my 15 minute slot nice and so what did um, did you try well um i when i got in there um it was brilliant i'll tell you the most magic thing about it and you probably you've done this already is um Having just tried the Oculus before that, I was getting used to people going, we're handing you the controller now, um, <laughs> which you've done as well yeah, like, yeah, when, yeah, I've, yeah. when I've been around. I'm, I'm sort of there like this. What, give me, give me. It's a little um, different with the vibe, though, isn't it? It is, because what happens is you put the headset on and the headphones and then you're all of a sudden in like sort of what's like the um, like the boot up thing from the matrix pretty much and then yeah. the controllers just come floating towards <laughs> you <Yes. laughs> i think you've totally said this on yeah here, but it, it's magic of... isn't it the first time you see it it's like no oh, that's human movement in it, it, it in the space i'm in now yeah but it's a controller it's, or it's whatever yeah. it is representable yeah it's amazing yeah yeah so um yeah, that was amazing. And uh, so then I, the first thing I did was, oh, she just said, yeah, press the button, choose your colour, press the button, you blow up a balloon. Oh, and then yeah. And, and it's then you like push it away. Because you press the button, so you feel it in the, the controller, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just because it's 3D, it's like really there in front it's of like you. It's like you're blowing a balloon. Yeah. Um, so I did that, and she and she, I did that three times. And then I did the uh, the blue demo. Yeah, where that's you're, amazing. You're on the uh, the front of a sunken ship, and you're like walking around, and like everywhere you turn, and there's you're like, oh, there's a stingray, and then you turn <laughs> around, and there's a fucking massive whale, and <laughs> yeah. it was coming so close to me, and it was like slow, so I was just like recoiling slowly away, and just like, oh, get it away, get it away. I I, I was feeling really quite uncomfortable did, by the end. Did you did you walk about on that on that deck? Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I, well, the first thing I did was I was like, "Oh, well, I can walk around." Mm. So I um I walked along to the edge of the boat to like look under over yeah. it, um, and then uh, unfortunately you kind of hit the chaperone wall, right? As it were, and so I was like, "Oh, well, I can't go too far." Because you're but I could... an actual wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's amazing, <clears throat> isn't it? I think that that was the very first thing I think I tried on it, and just yeah. it was just that sense of just walking and like first of all you're, you're like oh god can i like do this because it's it, it doesn't feel you feel like you're gonna fall over or something do you know what i mean it's like yeah but you as, to, as soon as you take that first step it's like wow this is i i, I get it this is this is room the matrix. VR. this is yeah this is what it feels <laughs> like um, yeah it's crazy so what else did you try uh and then i did space pirate trainer which is awesome. the uh 
where you've got a gun in each hand. Okay, so I haven't tried this one. So, so tell me about this one. Oh, uh, well, it's cool. You're just like basically on what I suppose is like. It's like you're on a landing bay. Mm. You can't really... You. I look round and there's a spaceship behind me. Um, yeah. But that's not really interactive. You've just got all these... Uh, you've got a gun in each hand and you can reach behind you and pull out a shield, which is really cool. Um, and uh, you've just got these drones coming at you and you're... You, you're, you're uh, you're, you're, you're just shooting them basically mm. but it just feels really cool um i at first i was sort of like using both hands because it's so much more difficult to aim yeah i thought like i've got more chance of hitting stuff if i Be- train them both. because it's it's actual aiming isn't it it's um, yeah i've i've uh, i haven't done much shooty game stuff with the vive but i've used the razor hydras lots with the oculus rift i've even I've built stuff uh, using Razor Hydra is where it's a it's a gun in the game and it just feels amazing like yeah. just pointing at the enemy and shooting him yeah I know it, it sounds so it, basic it but... sounds so basic but what you've been doing before is clicking a controller yeah now you're pointing at a 3D space and a 3D enemy and you're just pulling a trigger in a yeah. in what feels and looks exactly like a gun it's like it's it's a whole new level isn't it it really is um yeah so that was cool and so at first i was just shooting and then as the 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 waves uh, were kind of increasing i started getting the shield out a bit and and what's great is of course you can you can put the shield out to uh deflect the bullets yeah. but you can also just move out of the way <laughs> yeah you can <laughs> you can duck out of the way of stuff and that's yeah yeah and well and actually move like what take steps but i will say it i think it was at that point that i accidentally crashed into the booth baby that was demoing <laughs> for me so yeah i was feeling a bit bad she she had a right strop actually at the end i was like oh, i'm so sorry for bumping into you she was like well you can't see what you're doing so i can't complain <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could feel the uh the anger it's probably um, the 200th time it had happened to her that day well yeah that i think they were doing 120 demos each day so yeah quite a lot hmm. um and the final thing I tried was tilt brush. Oh, yes. Which was cool, but I just felt like I needed to maybe have some more drugs before I do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> tilt brush. Oh, I can't wait to play tilt brush. I, I, played it, I, I played it the first time I tried it and like just immediately fell in love with that. It's just because yeah. it's not a game, but it's not an art tool like Photoshop or something. Is It's not, it's not a creativity app for making products or or adverts or anything like that it's literally just like playing isn't it it's it's playing with light and 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 art of, and like virtual pain it's it is yeah. it is in a way a kind of game because it's because of the way it's set up it's just meant to be like really engaging and uh just yeah it's it's more an experiential thing than like an art tool like you know like something like photoshop or paint but yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah, it's it was done by Google, and uh, yeah, so you've basically got on one controller, you've got a uh, you can like spin this like thing around that's got uh, your color palette and also the different brushes you can use. So you can sort of you can pick stars and just have all these like paint tinsel all around you and yeah. stuff. Get get right inside it and then start you know sort of coloring things in. And I've seen people like drawing around their furniture and then sitting on their furniture. Oh, right, yeah, because the chaperone does the outline. No, 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 they, in tilt brush. So they'll, oh. they'll get a little chair in the middle of their room, draw around it in tilt brush, and then oh. suddenly they have a 3D art version of their chair that they can actually sit on. And that they can, I was going to say, that you, feel. you better be... So you, you've created an, an art version of a free, of an actual object that you can now feel and see. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, weird, it's... trippy stuff. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and I was going to say, you have to be careful of moving stuff out of the way afterwards, but of course, no, you don't, because you just leave it there, and then you can see it, and you won't, you'll acknowledge it as a real object then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, so. I actually found, though, like, drawing stuff in, in Tilt Brush, um, even though it isn't real, I, I found myself ducking under stuff. So I'd, like, draw something at head level, and then instead of just walking through it, I'd actually, like... Yeah, yeah, I was like that. I was, you, you just... Your your brain is just like there's a physical object in front of you. Just don't don't put your head for it. Um, no, you have to kind of learn to ignore that. I think I don't know how easy it is to learn to ignore that. It's... Yeah, it is. It is weird. I found myself doing exactly the same thing. 
but I must have looked like the, an absolute weirdo uh, to <laughs> from the outside. Um, but no, it was really good. Um, so yeah, that was my experience with the Vive. Uh, overall, yeah, really impressed. It's definitely the future. Um, and I also tried the new Rift as well. So what did you try um, now? Uh, it was just a game called Esper 2. Yeah. Which is... Um, the telekinesis just, one, yeah. Yeah, where you're just sort of looking uh, and aiming with with your with your head effectively. Yeah. Uh, you're sat in a chair, so it felt one to one. Um, but the only reason I queued up for it was because um, a lot of the demos were still using the DK2, and I just wanted to try mm. out the um, the new headset, which I have on order. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I just uh, I I found I thought it was uh, really comfortable, uh, a lot lighter than uh, the previous riffs um also like the vibe as well um much higher clarity uh, much higher resolution i think they're doing something clever aren't they with each eye uh, uh, is it are you like looking at every other pixel with each eye or something because there's diffusion going on with the lenses there's so there's clever stuff going on with the lenses which is helping to minimize your perception of the screen door effect right um so yeah, there's that they use like hybrid fr- Fresnel lenses. So they have this Fresnel around the outside, and then a st- like a standard, more like the, the old style lens in in the middle. Um, right. And that allows you to, allows them to give them like wide wild, wide field of view, but have this you know, like l- large fo- sweet spot in the middle, essentially. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, I see. Yeah, because you can see that in the lenses the so way they've you, got that. So if you if you move your eye too high down or up. Uh, then, it's, then it kind of goes a bit blurry when you move out of that sweet spot. Yeah. Um, so what do you think of uh, Esper? Uh, yeah, it was cool. It was totally fine. Uh, really good uh, sense of depth. Um, a lot of the, the bits I was playing was where you would just... Um, it starts off with you just picking up an object. Um, it's, this is just with a standard controller. Mm. Uh, picking up an object and then and then moving it into a little uh, dock that it's got to be on going to and on the floor and then that kind of uh evolves into like uh you uh just basically trying to launch these ball these objects onto like pressure plates and uh yeah it was it was pretty simplistic but there's like a narrator like a bit of a portal style sort of narration going on as well um it seemed very sort of tech demo to me but um, just I, I like played I say, the first one. Um, it, oh, right. it, it, I think I, I think I can't remember if it's on the Gear VR or if it's on the DK2. But yeah, I played the first one. It's 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 got like a kind of 1950s vibe, and it's a bit um, um, I don't know. It's a bit Austin Powers, I guess, or something, isn't it? It's a bit yeah, a bit kind of cheeky and uh, um, but yeah, like um, that's it. I'm presuming it's a similar sort of thing, like a weird kind of telekinesis puzzle game, essentially. But yeah, using, using your head as a controller. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was good. They had some other Vive stuff. They had Giant Cop, but I couldn't be asked to queue for that. Yeah. Uh, that looks fun, though, um, where you're sort of this huge giant dude and you're, like, solving crimes by just, like, reaching down and picking people up and f- flicking them away, <laughs> <laughs> throwing them into mountains. Um yeah, they had a few other bits and pieces, um, but some other games I tried. Um, the one that I think you'd really like, and this is uh, none of these were VR, um, but Scanner Sombra is a game by uh, Introversion, the guy who did the guys who did Prison Architect, mm-hmm. and they they were basically sort of doing. They they had two prototypes, and they were sort of. Um, they they were you it was like try each one and vote on which one you you want us to make right uh the the other game was uh i forget the name of it right now but it was like it looked like you were uh sort of dis like a bomb disposal sort of thing and you it was like uh involved a circuit board or something like that um but the one the one that i played scanner sombra was basically it starts off and you're j- there's just like you're in a cave and there's like a fire in on the floor and then there's like a a tunnel which is completely dark um but you've got like a little gun thing that Mm. uh paints like a sort of infrared spectrum around where you are right so if you paint like uh red that's like represents something that's close to you 
and if it's green then it's far away right so you end up going through this kind of completely pitch black sort of cave network but drawing this stuff like and you can oh and you can intensify the uh like the 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 uh the range of the weapon so you can do a concentrated burst or you can sort of spray out wide right uh, to get a better idea of what's around you i'm doing my best to describe this but it's a bit <laughs> it's a weird bit confusing it is a bit weird um i'll put a link to like screenshots or video i don't know if they've released any yet um but um yeah it's still an alpha version but it's great because once you get through this um it's uh, everything's kind of translucent so you can sort of see all this kind of stuff that you've painted right it's like you can only see the paint and nothing else so uh okay yeah and and you end up and it's uh, there's no light enemies you're just exploring this area mm -hmm. and it kind of wraps back on itself and that's the end of the demo so uh, it's just a prototype and they're just sort of pitching these ideas but i thought that, that was really quite sort of trippy and i thought yeah Pat probably like that yeah that, that sounds kind of cool <laughs> Yeah, um, I played a game called Masquerada, which I've talked about on here a little while ago. That was the first game I played. Um, it's an isometric RPG, but very much more uh, Japanese inspired than I thought it might be. So uh, right. that was okay. But well, I it's mean, kind I, of Banner Saga, or uh, n well, it's more isometric. It's and it's got the combat like from like the old Baldur's Gate, where it's like it's 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 like. Um, it's not turn-based, but you can make it turn-based if you keep hitting the space bar okay. uh, between every action. Um, to be honest, I, I, <laughs> I, because I wasn't didn't have much invested in playing it. I there was a guy sat next to me who was like ach achingly like trying to do each thing, and I just like left it. I didn't pause it at all and just wondered what would happen if like will 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 can I die? Is it super easy or yeah. not? And what happened was. If you die, your guys just come back after a while. So I was just like, uh, I don't know if there's really much challenge involved no, in that. And right. so, so I wasn't mega impressed with that. Okay. Um, I played a game called Valhalla, which is not spelt like that. It's got ones in the title and stuff. Sure. Where it's it's a uh, it's you're a bar t it's a bartender simulator. Right. <laughs> but it's very like Japanese again. So. You've just, but what it is, just you just got people coming up to you, and they're all like manga, manga, and like you have to reading all the text, <laughs> click reading all the text, click, and yeah. and the, the first person that comes up to you is like she's like streaming her cam like mobile and sort of like she's like say something interesting and it just goes on and on and every now and then <laughs> they ask for a cocktail and you have to put in the and right amount like, of ingredients. Finally, <laughs> finally, that's all I wanted to know. What drink you literally? I'll just make it now. I was like, just I've got 10 minutes me, just before. Just tell me that next time. Yeah. Don't tell us the I, other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was literally like, I've got 10 minutes before I get on the vibe. So I'll just keep doing this until it gets to the time that I can go and do that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> um, probably a waste of time. And, oh, I played another game called Outreach, was which was like where you were. This is very much in, in development, but you were like um, an astronaut. And the control scheme that they'd come up with for this was the triggers. And so you kind of, you've got no direct control because you've got it's zero gravity. So you're just yeah. floating. Um, and whenever you come up against a wall, you can hold the trigger in and then let go and it'll push you off in that direction. Right. Okay. So, um, interesting idea, but this is in a really confined area and there's no lighting in it at all. So you can't see shit. Right. And uh, I just found it ultimately a bit frustrating and gave up after about five minutes. <laughs> OK. But yeah, that was it. Um, those were all the games I really played. Um, I also went to a talk uh, about Firewatch, which was with oh. Ollie Moss, the artist, mm -hmm. and James Benson, the animator, who also worked on Ori and the Blind Forest. They're both British guys. Yeah. And uh, they were just talking for about 40 minutes. Uh, the hall where they were doing the talks was enormous, uh, massive. Um makes you realize how many people are actually there <laughs> yeah um <laughs> they actually but, did a uh, uh, did a talk recently on a thing called the foo show which is, which is a new vr app for the for, for the rift uh, oh yeah they, they, it's it's um that's it's that old guy from tested i think um and he's oh um, yeah he's yeah it's just a chat show but in vr so they have oh, like nice. virtual avatar versions of themselves yeah. Uh, and yeah, and they just like interview people and pull up kind of 3D assets and stuff in the world. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Oh, so that's yeah. not nice way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah, sort of so like the a... only things I really, uh, I only, I got out of that talk was, um, 
like apparently there's loads of stuff in Firewatch, like uh, the table and the map and stuff you have in the middle of the, your cabin. Mm. That was all supposed to be like a whole sort of interface for how you would put out all the fires in the game. But of course you don't put out any fires in the game, do you? No. Spoiler. <laughs> Basically, they, they they had loads of systems in the game that they just they just dropped it all. Yeah. Because they were like, actually, just, this just, is more they, a game. I think they just concentrated on the story. That's probably what happens. They were probably yeah. like, let's build this whole huge like open world and make it like a sandbox. And then there is like, actually, should we just do the the most important thing about this game? And that's why that game was mint because yeah. it was there was no fluff. There was no filler. It was just awesome all the way through. Like that's, I think that's, I think that's the, the best way it could have been, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. More stuff added to it might have diluted it a bit. Yeah, it ultimately was a was a game about talking on a CB wireless and walking around a beautiful landscape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's that's all it needed to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, what's interesting is. Um, uh, the animator guy, he, uh, they asked him, uh, someone asked a question saying, do you, uh, like, do you take video first to, like, reference? And he said, no, he doesn't do any of that. It's all completely drawn, mm. which I guess is how he gets that very sort of cartoony Disney style mm. effect. So I thought that was interesting. And Ollie Moss, uh, he'd never worked on a game before. So this was his first one. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, EGX was definitely cool. Uh, I spent, um, I got, like I said, I got there for 10 and I left about four. Um, so it was cool actually having that HD. Like if I'd have made that demo at the, of the HTC Vive in the morning, I would have probably gone home straight after <laughs> because that's basically what I did after, after that. You know, right. well, I went to the Firewatch talk, just saw, I came out of it and people were just lining up. And one of the security guys, he goes, you come into the Firewatch thing? I was like, oh, okay, I'll stay for that. Then mm. I'll go. Um, but yeah, there was a, there was a load of talks I wanted to do. And I went on Friday specifically because of the talks that were on. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, um, I didn't go to any of them <laughs> from that one, but, uh, yeah, st- <clears throat> still a really good show. I'll definitely go back next year. Um, I think I just love the vibe of it, of it just sort of like wandering around and it. just the vibe of it. Yeah. Um, just just being able to sort of try out whatever. The one thing, I, of course, I didn't get on was PlayStation VR um, because they 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 did the sign up of that online. Yeah, so, they were a little, little exclusive with that. I I, I didn't give them my my email address. Um, yeah, I didn't think I was going to get around to it. This has been the Not Playing Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk where you can also hear myself and Ian talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast and Adam Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening on iTunes, please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye.